Well, hey, welcome to the Creative Corner Podcast. I'm your host, Noah Black, and man, we've got an incredible, incredible guest today. Not only is this guy an incredible author, we're going to be talking about his book, Signed a Story, uh, but man, he's an excellent communicator. Uh, He's an incredible father, an incredible husband, uh, as well as he is a principal, but man, even more than that, he's one of my dear friends. It is Chris Smith, so we're going to welcome him to the podcast. Man, Chris, thank you so much for joining us. Man, it is honestly my pleasure and my honor to be here. I'm excited. Yeah, yeah. So just to talk a little bit about for the for the viewers who are I'm sure there's gonna be tons of people hanging out with us on the podcast and or, or watching through YouTube that may know you very, very well. You're a very well known person in the community. <laughs> um, but for people who don't, just tell them a little bit about yourself, um, kind of like where your where your job is in life kind and then we'll get into the book a little bit later Absolutely. but just some of that stuff. Yeah, it's funny you say that because we have a running joke with my family that anytime we go out I have to see at least one person. At least. <laughs> and I, you should drop her nuts, but now she just is like, just go say hey, but don't be weird. Yeah. <laughs> don't be too weird. Um, so, uh, so we go do that. Uh, but yeah, um, I do. I, we've been here. I did not grow up here, but um, have lived here. My, Christy and I have been married for 21 years, and oh, I've been awesome. here 22. Um, yeah. So uh, it's pretty pretty great. Got to know a lot of awesome people, yeah. including you guys. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, so grew up in Winston-Salem and... Um, just man, I tell you, uh, I had a really cool childhood. I have a twin brother um, mm-hmm. that's uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, oh um, yeah. You know, it's always <laughs> fun to mess with people on that. Even. Yeah. So, so that was it. So it's just us and my mom and my grandparents, and life was great. And uh, man, I tell you, God has just taken me on quite an adventure since then. Yeah. Um, went to college in Tennessee, a little small school, and uh, loved that. And then met my wife Christy. I worked down at uh, Fort Caswell, which mm-hmm. is a Baptist youth camp. Yeah. And uh, both Christy and I worked down there. So that's how God connected us because she did grow up in Canapolis. So that was, yeah. that's pretty cool. Um, and I was very thankful. It was one of those like, Lord, if, if you want me to meet somebody cool, you know, let me, so I started, <laughs> so I started dating her best friend. Yeah. Um, but then that didn't work out that first summer. So uh, we connected the yeah. second summer. So yeah. it was really cool. Yeah. That's um, awesome. But man, and then got into, got into teaching and taught for a while and did some youth pastor work, Mm -hmm. um, part-time children's pastor work, and really felt like the Lord was going to call me into full-time ministry. And I use that term kind of loosely because, you know, we usually say church ministry, you know, when I say ministry. But, uh, man, God just kind of put a a halt on that and was like, he opened up the door again. I got a scholarship to go be a principal. And And I still say that, that that's... That's my ministry. The yeah, school right, ministry. Yeah. Um, I joke with people. I'm like, you know, we, we spend, and you know this, 40% of our time um, trying to get people into the doors at church, right? Yeah, I mean, our yeah, resources, yeah. our time, we're yeah. doing all that. And I'm like, man, mine have to show up. It's a <laughs> lot. <laughs> they have to be there. Um, so I get to pour into, um, you know, about 850 kids and over 100 staff members yeah. every day. So about 1,000 people. And it's a humbling wow. um, reminder. Of yeah. the impact that I that I get to to just make every day, but it's it's got to be a choice, and so yeah. it's certainly been a little crazy lately. Yeah, but uh, but it's 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 a blessing, and um, just I love it. Yeah. I love it, and it really is a, it's a great ministry. Yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. And I I love uh, you and your wife Christy so so much, and the the way that you guys are so such powerful encouragers i think that you guys are built for the and, and christy she works at, at culturing and so yes. the the environments that that you guys are in of how people oriented you are i think you talking about your area that you you work in how it's a ministry i mean it, it's it fits you guys so well and that you because you. you guys are just incredible and so and, and on top of that man like we We've been able to go to the same church together for a long time, and so you guys have heard me mention our church, Propel. Um, but being able to serve with you guys, I mean, it's it's just a ton of fun. Like it's it's just enjoyable, yes. and so being able to see you guys in that in that platform, and so and I know you got uh, I know you've done groups before with Tyler, oh, yeah. and so yes. we're we're all very well connected. <laughs> yes, in, in very that, much in that sense. But just to, out, of, out of curiosity too, um, you mentioned with with you being a principal. Um, over the past year and a half, almost two years now, it's been it's been crazy. Like it's been crazy roller coaster for everybody with the pandemic. And but I'm I'm curious to hear your perspective of how that's impacted being and navigating, you know, running an organization like a school and trying to deal with a, a complete 180 pivot on how you operate. So what yeah. what's that experience been well, like for I, you? I think you hit the nail on the head. It really is 
completely different. You know, it, it is that that one eighty shift. Um, everybody, you know, that our we all went to school to major in you know teaching education. You yeah. know, and and, um, and now all of a sudden we're healthcare professionals and we're right. having to learn laws and you know yeah, rules right. and contact trace. I'm like, yeah. I feel like you know it should be like a TV show. Like yeah. you, know, you got like <laughs> the contact tracers yeah. and they like jump out of a van and just like <laughs> swerve, like just go everywhere, but uh, which doesn't happen. So yeah. uh, not a scare scare your listeners. You're, you're, <laughs> But um, but it is kind of like that because it's just all this um, just truly kind of think of you know it's like a kind of I guess wandering in the wilderness a little bit you yeah kind of you don't have you know you might have a rudimentary map that you're trying to follow yeah but, but it's just it's different but what hasn't changed is and I really the opportunity to love people to care about people yeah, to support right. people I mean that's even accentuated and yeah. I, I think one thing that's what stands out for me most is um, I know early on I, I was I'm in a was in a principal group uh, uh, called the mastermind group and and our, our leader Danny was talking to us and he's like you know what I figured out is that in this pandemic and this was pretty a couple months in yeah he's like I think the pandemic is, is doing two things if you were doing things really well so if you had a great, I mean, if you were just loving on people, and we talk a lot, like our, our school culture is, is one of home. So what we, yeah, call, we, we yeah. want people to feel home and connected. If you're doing that well, but the pandemic has brought that even more to light. Like it's just shown a spotlight 100%. on that. And it's like, yeah. man, you know, our school do, does this well. You know, we, we and, and the, I think for us, a big thing was trust. Because, you know, people got to trust you. You know, oh, yeah. like, yeah. I'm sending my kid and I don't know what's going on. And I need to know you're doing all these things to help it, keep my kids safe and do and, and still teach them. Um, so that, 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 that culture of just trusting and transparency yeah. was there. And so that spotlight shining bright. But it's it's it's. Just like one of those, it's okay to be in the spotlight on yeah. this because you feel good about it. 100%. You, know, it's like yeah, yeah. you can shine on that all day long. But then the flip side is, I think, things that sometimes people kind of were smoking, mirroring, you know, yeah. kind of like, yeah. oh, well, it's working okay. Yeah. Man, you during this pandemic, you put a spotlight on that and every crack, every crack is visible. Right. So yeah. And so it's yeah. like, wait a second, I thought you said you were doing this, but look there, look there, look there. Yeah. And so that's why I think that trust yeah. is so important. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it's it, like I said. For for me, what what keeps me motivated is that opportunity to show up and still make an impact. It may yeah. be different, you know. I, I might be talking a parent through like just their frustrations with yeah. these new things, but you can still impact. Yeah, and strengthen right. that relationship. Yeah, yeah. And it, I mean, it totally it shifts the dynamic of everything. Like it's yeah. it's yeah. such a weird, especially whenever you're dealing with people, because then it's. it's you can't be your social distancing. You can't be with people, but then that's like people is is what that's our living as people. Yes. Yes. And so it's it's such a weird thing. And now I'm getting like you. It was it was interesting with even shifting uh, church dynamics. So for for oh, yeah. myself, for people who don't know, uh, I'm the worship director, and then uh, these guys are like really great leaders on the team. So you guys like Saul yeah. too. How much everything has to shift. You came in your first Very week. Your, your first week, Tyler and, and his wife Emily, they they came one week in person, and then the next week was the shutdown. And yeah. so y- y'all's experience yeah. with serving within a church was just how the heck do we navigate online? <laughs> <laughs> and you got to jump head first right into that. I'd say it took almost a year until. I had to start learning. Okay, we're in person now. That you're yeah, now we're going to learn what we do in a normal yeah. service. It's, yeah. a, it's a real person. I saw them on the screen, and they're real. Yeah, uh, yeah. And even navigating, like, right. we've yeah. been like we've been involved in church for so long. Uh, like, even with that shift, like you can hear the similarities to right. yeah. church with, yeah. with that. And so, like, how even from Aaron's perspective, like, what what are the similarities with that that you notice even with church culture? What is so like being all online, it was hard for us to kind of love on people a little bit, at least for me, for me, yes. because like, yes. you know, I still saw like these guys all the time because we were there recording every yeah, week. Serving, yeah. But it was, it was like, you know, the normal people we see every week, it's like, okay, well, I'm not seeing anybody right now. We're not doing groups right now because of it. You know, we're not meeting a lot. So it's like when we finally did see people, it's just like, oh, I, 
kind of forgot some of these people were here. I think, yeah. What's your name again? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. right. So there, was, there wasn't that face-to-face -face, like, right. contact. Right. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of our guys, especially on our, on our team, it's we're huggers, man. We can't. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm right yeah. there with you. It's it's weird. It was like it was, it's still awkward now. You catch yourself with like, like the, the yeah. hug, and then it's like, do I the handshake or is it the fist bump? Yeah. Is it the elbow? Do you just yeah. nod? Yeah. yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you do it all. <laughs> but it's it's weird, man. But it's definitely. Um, I think you you mentioned a really cool thing of it exposed a lot of the negative. But if you were really doing well, yeah. it it showed a spotlight on that. Yeah. And I think that's that's huge because there's there's businesses, there's uh, you know organizations that are very people oriented that it it showed like, hey, some of this stuff isn't working. And but for some of those other places that were like. Hey, this part of our, it feels like a family. It feels like a home. Yes. Right. That shows to other people. It's not just a spotlight on that organization or for you guys, but then it shows, hey, those guys are doing something right. What is it that they're doing, and what can what can I be doing in in, in my spaces too? And yes. so I think that my spaces, my space is still a thing, right? <laughs> yeah, I think <laughs> it's, still, it's, it's still, but, in some way. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it, it's it's crazy. And so, what would you say um, through that? You said that it, it showed some positives, but also some negatives. What have been some things within even just your your school, your organization that you've seen through this process has improved going into, you know, now it's 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 not necessarily mellowed out, but it's definitely it's taken a little bit more of an uphill. Like we're we're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel yes. type of thing. Yeah. And I, I do. I, I feel like, you know, people and I love this. I mean, God made us very relational, but also adaptable. You know, yeah, and I yeah, love yeah. that. That's and good. and I, I believe that it really has shown us now that, like, while things may look different and we can't connect maybe in the same the exact same way we did before. We're learning new ways to, to bridge some of those gaps and yeah. bring that together. And I think it's shown that kids, I always say with kids, period. Um, it's why one, I, I love kids because um, one, they're always very forgiving. You know what I mean? Like that, that's like my favorite thing about kids. But two, I think kids also, we assume way too much with kids. I think we assume on both ends well, on that, like, oh, that kid will be fine. You know, they can figure that out on their yeah. own. And they really need some guidance. But also, they can't do that. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, they can. So yeah. one of the really cool things for us is we've been able to see some kids, because there's all different levels of parent support, that kids have been able to figure a lot out. And we had, like, coming back when we were kind of hybrid and in and out, yeah. you know, we had kids that were, like, tech gurus. Like, oh, Microsoft <laughs> Teams is crashed and the teacher's freaking out. And they're like, there's this little eight-year-old. He's like, beep, beep, beep. <laughs> Let me show you how to do that. You know, I, thought that, I mean, it's seriously, like we had this one major issue, like teacher kittens, like early on, like, well, I don't know how to see all my kids on the screen, and I'm dead serious. It was like yeah. a third grader was like, I'll show you how to do that. Like here it is. Like so, that you know, so that crazy. part has been really cool. Um, to the kids have adapted, and yeah. then you know they've been able to kind of step up and then show, hey, they can do this. Um, yeah. And I think the biggest thing for us too is is it has taught us not to take things for granted. I mean, you know, you yeah. so many things pre-pandemic, we all were like, oh, you know, I yeah. love going to, you know, school and to church and yeah. to the movies and, you know, all yeah. that. And now it's like you really do have a deeper appreciation oh, for that. I mean, and yeah. I know you get it. I joke all the time. Joke, but seriously, like with Pastor Nick or, or my buddy, Pastor Corey, and, and my pastor friends, being a principal and a, a pastor, are very similar. Yeah. You know, you're, yeah, you're yeah. trying to, and you understand that being on staff and leadership and, and just trying to navigate all that. But I do love um, that it, it's just that great reminder that, man, we can't take this for granted. We got the opportunity today, so we're going to, we're going to make the best of it today. 100%. We're going to pour into it and we're going to, and our thing this year is run to win. So yeah. we're going to win. I yeah. mean, you know, we are going to win um, the day, the year, yeah. the kid, whatever yeah. it means. Yeah. 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 That's so good. And, and highlighting a lot of those just incredible moments and it, it makes things so much more enjoyable. You feel uh, so much more present, I think has been a big yes. thing that, that I've been taught through this, through this season. And, um, it's able, you're able to kind of recognize a moment like when it's special before it's, I think before, if you're not careful, um, like pre COVID, you're still kind of going through the motions, you get caught in, you know, especially as technological as, as we are now, it's, you can get sucked into the, you know, the social media aspect. You can get sucked into a lot of different things, but I think definitely that's been a big thing for me personally. It's just being present in a moment yes. and like understanding how much of 
being able to sit in a room full of guys that I care about, like I, I cherish these types of moments better. And I think it, it honestly, it, it, it was a, it was a big wake up call even for me. And it worked out great. The timing of it too, this sounds weird, but like it worked out great. Cause I know there's been very negative effects of, of COVID on people's lives. So I don't take that away, but um, even for just getting married and, and then like going through that whole process of like, how the heck are we going to be able to have enough people at our wedding that we want to be there? And then <laughs> right. how is this going to function? And it was, it was just a weird thing, but it also, I appreciated the moments leading up to it. And, mm-hmm. and you know, it, it made the, the little thing, uh, little thing, but the like big moment of, of marriage going through the process of when, when my wife and I first started dating, it's like a lot of this were in quarantine. So this is this, like the worst time to start dating <laughs> but then uh, it ended up i mean it's been it's been incredible and so i think that's a an incredible thing to take away of what you learn from it even though it's it's been a really a really dark situation so i think that's huge man and it, not to not to even turn the topics too much I, I, good. I just mentioned getting married let me let me tell y'all something about chris Chris is an incredibly generous human being. And I will say this. I love everybody that is invested in the Carly and I's marriage. I genuinely do. There's been so many people who have invested their time, their knowledge. They've invested money. They've invested gifts. But I will say this. Chris has given us the coolest gift I've ever received within our marriage. You get, let me see this. Eric, go grab that real quick. This man, this man, he came up to me. He's like, hey, man, I just want to let you know I love you guys. And uh, I want to invest in you guys. And so on your, on your, he said, on your honeymoon, I want to pay for you guys whenever you get, because we went to Disney World on our honeymoon. Because we're going to get on Disney stuff here in a second. Oh, yeah. But he said, I just want to pay for you guys to build a lightsaber. And man, let me tell you about this lightsaber. This ain't no plastic Walmart. You've got to try and flip it out. And it, it's just, it's, mm. have you, you said you and your son? Have yes, yeah. One? Jackson and I built one. I don't here. think you've seen this yet. No, I have not seen it. So oh, look, check yes. this. This bad boy is not, I may have to change batteries in it because it's been done. Okay. But man, for the, for the people listening, you got to you got to go to YouTube right now. <laughs> I agree. But I mean just like that that stuff that's metal right there. Yes. You got to feel that's it's that's solid. got some weight solid. on it. Solid. But this man, uh, that might that might injure somebody. I could cut off Tyler's arm right now. I won't. <laughs> Tyler, I will not do it. But that, the, the coolest. I need that for my job. <laughs> I need that for oh, my yeah. job. <laughs> Aaron's like, if you could not cut off his arm, that's going to make my job harder. You right. Said, yeah. just, to, just to make Aaron frustrated, tell him that Tyler is his boss. That's no. no <laughs> Tyler is not my boss. Uh, but, but no, that is, well, I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah and, and I'll brag on Noah for a second. That was, uh, well, Carl. Carly was like, I was, they got back, and I was like, oh, you know, how was it? We're talking. We're going through everything. And she was like, thank you so much for that. Yeah. She was like, I don't want to say this in front of everybody, but that was by far our favorite wedding. <laughs> 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 it was awesome. It was great. It was great. We, we loved it. Yeah. And it's a, it's a, it's a cool experience, yes. man. We got we to gotta talk about Disney stuff now. Yes, we right. do. So, uh, for those of you who don't know, like Tyler and myself, our whole family is like we were raised on Disney, like not even just the movies, but the parks themselves. And so we, we obsess over it. You can look all if, if you were looking around this whole room or around the house, uh, it's it's just it's got Disney stuff all in it. But Chris, you guys, you guys are pretty pretty big we fanatics. Disney. Disney. Yes, to yeah. the point that my wife is like ready to draw the line. But uh, <laughs> yeah, because I didn't even I'm talking about myself. I didn't talk about my two amazing kids that I love to death. But we do. <laughs> um, I have two teenagers, two high schoolers, which is crazy. But yeah, we started them very young. Yeah, uh, we took our first trip to Disney when they were still in the stroller. And um, man, we have been blessed to go about every year and a half yeah. since then. And yeah. uh, so I guess this will be our. We're going. Well, hopefully, Lord willing, we're going back here soon, and yeah. that'll be our seventh time going. Yeah, um, like on a, a trip, and man, it's just it's, it really is. It's cliche. I don't care. <laughs> it's the most magical place on earth. It's awesome. You walk in, and you're just you know, you're just there. Yeah, right? and you're like that's. You just there. It's it's everything. It's the immersive feel and yeah. sounds and smells and yeah. we're talking about candles. Uh, we, yeah, we, both, both, we both get the Disney candles, you know, because it's it, that's what it is. Yeah. And it's I mean, and I think for me, it's also 
And I know you're a, a bit of a dreamer too, you know. And that's just, <laughs> it's like that Walt Disney vision of just if you can dream it, you can do it. Yeah. Um, and I've got my tagline on my emails, you know, uh, is his quote that um, it takes people to make the dream a reality. Yeah. You know, you can do all these other things, but then you got to have people. And um, that, that I'm always connected to that. I'm like, man, yeah. like, this dude just was like, I'm going to go buy a swamp in Florida. And I'm going to paint the coolest place on earth. And he yeah. did. Yeah. Um, yeah. He really did. So, uh, but man, yeah, just love it. Love the love the rides. Like I said, the experiences, the yeah. food. Eat way too much food. The dog. Oh, yes. And, oh, yeah. And all that. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, What's your favorite ride there? Probably just because Jackson and I, but well, we have um, we have just ridden it out. But Expedition Everest is probably our favorite. Oh, yeah. Just yeah. because that was like his first big roller coaster when he was probably seven. And then every year, you know, and then we'd go back and ride in the front and mm-hmm. um, see how many times in a row we could ride. Yeah. We went at a slow time. And yeah. So uh, definitely love some Everest. But man, I'm excited. We have, we did, um, the Millennium Falcon ride, yeah. but we have not done Rise of the Resistance. So mm-hmm. I'm really hoping when we go, I've heard yeah. that's pretty Yeah, pretty yeah. Awesome. Carly and I, we got to actually ride Rise of the Resistance on our honeymoon, and we were like, oh my gosh, we're yeah. inside the freaking movie right yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. It's wild, but yeah, yeah. it's, it's cool. Ho- hopefully I'll be able to ride it in the next coming months. Yeah. We're going for Addie's birthday. Yeah, we're going Sweet. to take over the first time. I love it. Expedition over will we close. <laughs> but yeah. it's, so that's, oh, that's, that's I did yeah. see that. Yeah. that but the good thing bit. is, it's a rumor that the reason why is because they're bringing the they're Yeti fixing back. The Yeti. Yeah, I've never seen the Yeti I, before. I, I, I did not. I guess if you didn't yeah. ride it within the, like, the first six it's like it's It's like it's there, but it's just stationary. Right. But it's it's going to swoop down right. trying, it's it's gonna trying to eat you. Aaron's just like... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just know it's awesome. Okay. That's all you have to know. We start talking about Universal. You got to Hogwarts. That's where I've been. I've been to Disney once where we just went to Magic Kingdom yeah. you know that year but yeah. and then we went to Universal the next day and I'm a big Harry Potter fan so, yeah, I'm, so like, I really the, connect me and my sister was, really connected with Universal yeah, just because sure. of the Harry Potter stuff yeah, wow. so Universal looks so cool too yeah. man I'd love to go there go to Hogwarts go to the Simpsons all that good stuff yeah. I want some lard lad Donuts. That's what I want. <laughs> you, you, you know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. I love the donuts. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. But yeah, it's it's so cool, man. And and just Disney in general. It's one of those things of I get why some people that they don't they may not understand the appeal of it as much. But it's I think it's one of those you grow up on the movies. You're connected with it so heavily, yep. and then you you attach on so many like great memories going with your family. It's like it. man, it's just so good. Like that's it's it's so much fun to go back, see new things because they're always you yep. get you can go a hundred times. And then you go yeah. that 101 time, and everything's going to be you different. You do something different. And yeah. it's, it's just yeah. awesome. The coolest, I think the coolest thing ever happened on about being doing something different, we went to some good friends of ours, uh, Natalie and Donnie, and um, their son was a little bit too, like just barely too short to ride test track. Mm-hmm. So she was, Natalie was hanging out down in the lobby area. They got like, you know, the cars yeah. set up, you know, when you come off the ride. And yeah. So she was hanging out down there and started talking to a, a guy that worked there, one of the CMs, and uh, was telling her about it. And he was like, oh, hey, he can't ride, you know, blah, blah, blah. But he was like, well, I tell you what, here's this, here's this card. Gave her this card. Was like, if you go down the ride, like on the back end, there's a door. There's a camera. You have to show them the card, and then they'll lead you down a corridor. <laughs> oh, my So gosh. we get off. She's telling us that, and we're like, it's like this for real, or is, like, are they going to lead us Plain to, trick. like, yeah. something weird? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I'm going to end up in Universal at Dagon now. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so we go down there, and honest to goodness, yeah, it go you – you legitimately, there's nobody, there's a camera, you like held the card up, door open, walk down this hallway, yeah. there's an elevator, hold up the card again, they open the elevator, you go up and you're over, you're on the top of Test Track and you're looking what? out over it. They had free, all all you could drink, little drink like dispensers, That's like at Club Cool. Sick. They had um, the design boards, like huge ones, where you could design your cars. And oh they had gosh. like a meeting area, and that's where they had like meetings. And if they had like fancy people, you know, VPs of whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we got to go up there and just that's hang out. So and then wild. we got free fast passes to ride it again. Yeah. Um, and design oh with our gosh. design cars. That's um, so sick. But I was like, dude, those are the kind of things, you know, those little things. Yeah, even. they go above and beyond yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So yeah. what you're saying is, I need to try to get Addie to ride test track that Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but really sad. No, Addie. More sad than that. Like, I, 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 I need to back a sad. 
I need real tears. That's no, right. Real tears. <laughs> we do not abuse children. No, no, no. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a principal. We're a, we're, 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 we have, we handle yeah, it. So that is not it at all. But uh, yeah, but yeah. So you yeah. never know. But it was it was a pretty cool, yeah, yeah. pretty cool experience. Yeah, that's so sick. Yeah, there there's tons of stuff. I'm I'm excited. I I love each time we get to go. It's definitely it's a it's a privilege, and it's it's one of those you walk away and you're inspired in some way. Like oh, a hundred percent. Man, I want to go home and I want to do something. I want to yeah. do that. It's, it's just yeah. it's really cool. So love that. But yeah, man. So um, just to just to shift gears, um, I know I I really am excited to talk to you about your book, uh, Sign the Story. And so it's it's your first published yes. book, first book man. as an author and first so, book. I've said it for. At least 15 years, I wanted to write a book until yeah. my wife finally was like, would you stop saying it and just do it? Yeah. Um, and literally, talking about, like, again, positive things that comes out of the quarantine. We were watching, I don't even know, I don't think, I don't think many people know this. Um, we were watching church online you know, when we were all virtual. Um, back last, it would have been like April, you know, yeah. probably two years, like not this past April, but yeah. the, the, when all this kicked off. And so... Um, we were watching church online, and um, I, sorry, Pastor Nick, I don't remember the exact message, but yeah. I mean, it was good. And I remember sitting there afterwards, and I just started writing. And I was like, just, yeah, and I wrote, and literally what I wrote was the introduction to this book. Oh, wow. I mean, within like 30 minutes, 25, 30 minutes. Okay. And I sat there and I read it to Christy. She was starting to cook lunch, and I read it to her, and she was like, that's pretty good. I was like, I'm gonna do this, and, and praise yeah. the Lord. I wrote the book in about three months. Wow, um, that's really awesome. did. And so then it was kind of um, wrote so really like April, May, and and part of June, like into March, April, like April, May were the big things. And then kind of did some proofreading, sent it out to one or two people that I trusted. Because the weirdest thing about a book, like it's like you are making yourself extremely vulnerable. Right. You know, I mean, we, yeah. you just are. And I try to always be transparent, but like when you write a book. You're really putting yourself out there, oh, yeah. and you and you get it because you do music. I mean, when you cover a song or you stand up on stage or you do it, I mean, some people are gonna be like, well, "That wasn't very good," you yeah. know. Yeah. But then other people are gonna be like, "That's awesome." Yeah. And then there might be something <laughs> in between that's like, "Well, I didn't like this, but I love this." Yeah. You know? yeah. So you get it. I mean, you know, but. I, I'm good talking with people, doing whatever. But yeah. like this, I was like, this is forever. Like I put this out yeah. there, my and it's, it's right. there, right? Yeah. I want to, you know. So, um, so the weirdest part was, or the the hardest struggle part was, I literally I proofread it some that summer, and kind of had it in a pretty good place. And then it was like, man, I felt like the Lord just kind of like paused, mm-hmm. like it was like He just kind of took His hand off of it, and I was like, okay. Well, I'm gonna like it's pretty much done, Lord. You know, I need to. I want to get it published, but like, yeah. and and so really for like August and September and even October, it just kind of set. Yeah, um, and I literally woke up one night, Lord. I felt like He woke me up at like three thirty in the morning, and it was like all I could think about was this to the point that I started like researching and trying to find some contacts of um, real publishers that and, and real um, editors that could look over it and. Uh, and from that point on, God led me to a, a lady who was awesome, and she really had edited a lot of books, worked in the publishing industry. Right. So she helped me shape it up some more. Um, and then that was like till January. Um, and then in January, it got with um, Palmetto Publishing, which is a local well, out of Charleston. Mm-hmm. They won a bunch of Best Ethical Awards, you know, just right. a real honest, open group, and I, I that connected with them, and they were like, hey, you know, it's kind of a, they're a, like a hybrid model, they, they do self-publishing, they do some of their own, so we just kind of got connected, and because yeah. my editor had done such a great job shaping it up, it uh, it came together yeah, pretty that's quick. that's so cool. So it's, yeah. it's pretty cool, yeah. but uh, I do want to read something. Can I read something? Oh, I love it. Yeah, okay. go ahead. All yeah. right, I'm going to read this, and uh, this is early on, right? I've got my introduction, but then, uh, but this is page four. So really, just real quick, uh, I will, I'll tell all our authors, it really, Sign the Story is kind of a weird name, but the whole goal is, and the whole thought process is that we all carry around what I call signs. Some people call them baggage, something people call them, you know, roadblocks, whatever, things that hold us back. Right. Um, and we all, I think, are have that choice every day. We yeah. can let that define me. I can say, well, I'm, because I'm not this... I can never be that. Yeah. And because, yeah. you know, this didn't work out for me this one time, it's never going to work mm. out for me. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the goal is that God it never wants us to be defined by our signs. He yeah. wants us to be defined by the story that he's written for us. Yeah. So, so the, the challenge and my prayer for this is really that it just 
it encourages people and reminds people yeah. that you do have a story. Yeah, and that's it, good. You've that's got awesome. to be able to sometimes press past stuff and just get over yourself sometimes to yeah, be able sure. to embrace that. Yeah, so, that's so good. Um, but so I want to read this. Um, uh, this was this is my first chapter, and, and really the book's broken up into three sections. It's kind of like an interactive book. It's got some places you can fill in stuff, like a little bit of a workbook, but not enough to tie, like bog you down. Because I yeah, know yeah. a lot of people don't love to write and do yeah. all that, but I do <laughs> want people to reflect. And um, but the goal is first is you kind of have to identify your signs and understand they're there, and then two, how you kind of really work through them and let God work with you through those, yeah. and then three is how you move past them and move to your story. Yeah. So it's it kind of section off but um, it says this it says you know what is attractive confidence i have a friend who is my height small framed wears glasses doesn't have straight teeth and is missing that defined jawline yet he walks into a room and he owns it he has a caring and genuine personality and people gravitate towards him i've studied him and i finally figured it out it's his confidence it's not arrogance there's a big difference between the two He's completely comfortable just being him. He loves God and knows God loves him. And I believe this helps tremendously. He has a passion for his job, his relationships, and his life. He does not try to be the best at everything. He simply gives his best. He's not the greatest singer, but he's a dynamic worship leader. He isn't the best guitar player or drummer, but he plays any instrument with passion and purpose. All this combines to form a confident and attractive person. That's you, man. <laughs> that's you that is you I, I wrote that um, and the cool part is when I wrote this you know I've only known you for about we could probably eight months you know but we had um, but it really like the first person God put on my heart when I was writing about like mm. how do you begin to understand yeah I'm not I might not be I don't have the the American Idol you know, halo yeah. floating around me. Yeah. But that doesn't mean I can't be this, this, be and live this awesome story that God wants yeah. me to live. Yeah. So I appreciate that. So that's your, that's yeah. you. So that you are, time. you really are like the, the person, and I appreciate you yeah. encouraging me because like I said, that was pretty early in our relationship. Mm-hmm. Um, but I saw that from the start. Yeah, I appreciate I that. That means it's really good. So like you're, that. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I'm praying God brings us to tons and tons of people, and I've had a yeah. great response. Yeah. But uh, every time people read that, it's you. And the cool part is one of our mutual friends, um, who I won't embarrass on the podcast, <laughs> came up to me and she had read this at the beach. Yeah. And she said, you know that part you're talking about? Like, <laughs> well, you're talking about Noah. And I, and I said, yeah. Like, I knew it. I knew it. So, uh, so that was pretty that's cool. Funny. So yeah. so people, as people get to know you. That's, yeah, I appreciate that's you, that, man. man. Yeah, that means a ton, man. And I think that um, in that, it's it's the whole I think what you talked about with the premise of the book is uh, when you find when you find confidence you're gonna find it in whenever you fully like understand who you are yes. and in your purpose and so it one like I I do appreciate that and that means like the world to me and so uh, that's a big thing that I know that you push very heavy in this book but the even just you live out what your what your goal is with this book of just allowing people to understand here hey. God has an intended purpose for your life, right. and it's different for you than it is for you, than it is for you, right. than it is for me. But it's not about having confidence in your actions, your attitude, your job. It's it's in who am I, who has God called me to be, Yes. and I'm, I'm going to use whatever giftings I have to push right. it. And right. so I, I think that that's huge, man, and I think that uh, it's something powerful that comes with that that people can, can understand is just, hey, I don't have to be the best. At everything, but if I can just focus on what I'm gifted in and where I can yes. use it and, and, and push people towards Jesus, it's going to change everything. What? It'll change the game, and yeah. so I think that's huge. Yeah. And so with with that man, uh, with this uh, with this big I know leap of faith for you with with this book, um, what have you found through the process on the front end? Like when you went in to, to write a book, there's obviously you don't just write a book and it's done. It's you got to write it. You mentioned you, you find the right people to connect with yes. to publish it. Was it as complicated as you thought? Was it more complicated? What was what was that process kind of like going yeah. into it? it? It was definitely more complicated. I yeah. mean, it, it just was. You know, it, it, a lot, I think, and I do believe, and I've talked to a lot of people since, that that's what the holdup is. You know, people will have these great ideas and have even a decent 
manuscript, you know, or, or a bulk of a book together, yeah. but they get discouraged because you do realize kind of quickly into it that you're like, wow, this is this is hard because yeah. there's not a, a, a simple process. You know, it's not – because there's so many different paths you can take. Well, you can self-publish. You can kind of do a hybrid model. You can try to get with a publisher, but, you know, that's – that's hard, and then you sometimes lose some of your creative licensing with that. Right. You know, like yeah. if, if I, I talked about maybe doing like more of a true workbook, like a, a group study guide that would go with this. Well, if you go with a publisher, you have to get their permission to do that a lot yeah. of times. You know, yeah. so um, but it, it is very tricky, and that's one of the pieces that I actually um, have have told God. I'm like, Lord, you brought me through this, and you worked out so many details on the yeah. back end. So if, if you bring people in my path that want guidance and support and encouragement and just to hear how I work through some of these things, I'll do it. Yeah. And so I've started, yeah. I have started connecting with a few people um, who are like, I want to write a book. Just tell me about the process. Or I've started this you know, manuscript, but help me know where to go or yeah, who, how did you good, get yeah. through this. So um, that's one of those opportunities that, like yeah. you said, um, you just take advantage of it. Yeah. You know, it's just yeah. there. Yeah, that's huge. I love that, man. And so for for you, um, especially with this book, I know that you've, you've still been pushing it and uh, you've been getting some some great feedback from it from what I've heard from you. And um, on top of that, is there anything that you're thinking through in the future of, hey, what's that next book look like? You know, what like I'm sure those those thoughts come to your mind where where you kind of act creatively with that. Of, right. You know, what what that timeline looks like, all that kind of stuff of, hey, I want to do this next. Is, is that kind of on your radar? It is. And people have always said, like, once you write one book, you'll want to do more. You know, yeah. and, and I definitely see that. I, I wanted to, again, and I believe I still will. The time it's just there. Um, I really want to do a children's version of this. Oh, because, that's awesome. Um, and I, so I've got the title. I want to call it Don't Hold Me Back. Mm-hmm. Um, and then really just make it about, you know, from a kid's perspective of. That's so cool. I'm, you know, well, I'm short. I'm not as cool as so and so. Well, I don't. I can't run as fast as that kid. Because yeah. we all, I mean, that's where I think it starts. Yeah. You know, kids get discouraged early on because, you know, we can't all be Aaron. I mean, <laughs> the coolest person ever. Well, but it's like, I'm sorry. You know, there's only one Aaron. Uh, but, and that, but that really is it. You know, so yeah. maybe um, just helping them understand. Hey, you know, you can push past whatever. And just because you're not as fast as this kid or you don't have hair like this. And um, our daughter isn't, she, both my kids have crazy, like thick, big, bushy hair. They get it from me. It's great. (laughs) (laughs) So, uh, but, uh, but, you know, um, but she's always like, I don't like my curly hair, you know, or I, I don't do this. And I'm like. Your curly hair is awesome. You yeah. know, like I love like a lot of people. People spend hundreds of dollars getting perms and curling their hair every morning. You know, hours yeah. and hours, and um, but you got it for free. You know, yeah. But sometimes I think we all fall in that trap of like yeah. we don't have. We, we, we fail to acknowledge what we have because yeah. we're looking at somebody else. One hundred percent. Oh man, I wish I I wish I had I wish I could do that. Um, but at the end of the day, man, God made you, you. A hundred percent. We're his workmanship created yeah. in Christ Jesus. So yeah. the more we can just kind of um, understand that and, and then we have to come to a peace about it. You yeah. know? Um, and I really, I mean, I'll give a shout out to all three of you guys in this room. Y'all are all very different, you know, but you, you know, you, you own who you are and you use your gifts wherever, you know, if Aaron needs to jump in and play drums, he's going to do that. Yeah. But if he needs to be working behind the scenes, he can do that too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Um, it's, it's just wherever the opportunity is. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent, man. And I think that's so, so encouraging no matter where people are like in their, you know, in their creative journey and in, in their jobs and, you know, in all of those opportunities, just finding those next steps in that. But specifically to the, to the person, I'm sure there, there's somebody who is, they've thought about taking that next step of, Hey, I've thought about writing something. I've thought about putting pen to paper or typing something. Like I've thought about putting my my life out there, or, or yes. you know, putting something. And for that person who may not have uh, taken, uh, may not have taken that step, maybe because they don't know how, or maybe because they're afraid to. Uh, how would you encourage that person? Just like, hey, take that next step. Uh, what would you What would you say to that person? You have to be. You have to just put it out there. You have to be willing to take that risk, you know, yeah. because at the end of the day, God's going to do with it whatever he wants. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's true for all of us in, in life in general. But I think so many times 
we miss out on the blessings mm. because we get nervous on the front end. And yeah. we're like, I don't know if I can do that. Yeah. And God's like, well, you can because yeah. I've gifted you to do it or I've given you an opportunity to do it. Um, yeah. And sometimes I think that's it. Somebody looks and they're like, well, I'm not that great of a writer. You know, I can't. It, people or people don't want to hear what what I have to say. You know, there's billions of people in the world. You're right. Probably at least two billion of those people don't want to hear what you have to say or could care less. Right. Yeah. But there's other people that do yeah. or that, that it will connect with. So for me, you know, yeah. If if any of your listeners are like, hey, what do I, you know, what do I do? Put it out there. You know, yeah. put it out there and be bold enough and vulnerable enough to say. This is me. You yeah. know, this is me. And, you know, let some, let a few people hear it that you trust, that, mm-hmm. that you know, that'll, that'll give you some honest feedback. Yeah. And then from there, you just really, like, pursue. There are tons of avenues to, that you can make things happen, yeah. you know. So, so it, it, it's not an issue of, of well, that's going to happen. I can't do that. It's a, I think it's more of a choice. Yeah. You choose to let something hold you back, kind of like in the book, you know, choose yeah. to say, well, I don't know. I got this sign here yeah. that says I'm never going to be a famous author. Guess what? You might not. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that your words can't be powerful. Yeah. Anymore. That's so good. Yeah. That's right. huge, man. Yeah. And I think that's, that's such an encouraging thing, even, you know, for, for, I mean, people like myself who like, there's, there's certain goals that I have in mind. And, you know, there's times where everybody kind of gets to a, a moment of discouragement or you get, yeah. you get stuck in your head. And so to hear that reminder is is such an encouragement. I'm sure it is for for many out there listening. And man, I just I appreciate you uh, one for taking the time to like come and sit and, yeah. and talk through that man and, and just uh, be open about that and, and with your story, just your life, but then also with this book. But then uh, additionally, like I just I thank you and I appreciate you for your friendship and your your consistent like you're you're one of those people that whenever I think of someone who is just they love people genuinely. They don't do it because it's 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 on my job title and right. I have to do it. Right. Like, but you you do it well. You encourage people well. You're one of those people that whenever you you walk into a room, that people know it. Not because you're just loud like I am, but <laughs> but you your your presence is known because people know that hey, when Chris walks in the room, I'm gonna I'm gonna smile. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be excited because he's gonna make me. Uh, he's going to remind me of, of my value and, and the reason why I'm here. And so I, I appreciate that, man. I thank you for, for taking the time and, me and hanging out with us. No, that, this has been awesome. I, we can do this. We, we could have a six-hour podcast. But, <laughs> yeah. uh, the listeners would get more. We'd still be having a great time. Uh, but, uh, but, man, that means a lot. And yeah. that can reciprocate that completely. And just love love how God has brought People in, into my life and connected us and yeah. um, all of us and it's hundred percent excited to see what he's going to keep doing. Yeah, a hundred percent, man. Yeah. So just for the people out there who they want to get a copy of Sign the Story, where yes. do they get that? You can. Um, it's on Amazon, so that's the easiest. Um, Target. So if you got a red card, you can mm-hmm. always get five percent off. And sometimes, and then uh, BarnesandNobles.com too. So Target.com. It's not in any stores yet, um, but we'll see. And I'm hopefully, Lord willing, going to do a, a book signing um, probably in November. Mm-hmm. Um, so That'd be awesome. I'll get you know get some information out there for that because I have yeah. not been able to do that. We just love to you know hear people because that's my favorite part of this is yeah. really it is is people just saying, hey, that encouraged me. Yeah, that right. I loved that, that one point or man, it just reminded me so much of what's of yeah. what's there they, and, I, and it, I needed to hear that so that has been the biggest blessing for me yeah. um to to do that yeah so. that's so cool man yeah thank you once again and uh just appreciate you man and so uh yeah. thank you guys everybody that's that's been listening uh, on spotify apple wherever you're listening from man we appreciate it be sure to subscribe keep up there then if you're checking it out through youtube subscribe there comment comment people you'd like to see in the future but also show chris some love let them know uh, how awesome of a person he is and how beautiful his hair is. We love it. And, uh, but yeah, we thank you guys so much for checking out the podcast. Be sure, keep up with us on social media. It, it's on Instagram at Creative Corner Company. Facebook is at The Creative Corner Co. And man, we just appreciate you guys and we look forward to seeing you uh, next week as we have another incredible guest on the podcast. But we thank you so much for listening and we'll see you next week.